So four out of five stars for the great story, 10 out of 10 on the uncomfortable scale for me personally. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Emily, and guess what I did? I completed a reading challenge. <laughs> Good for me. Good for me. Okay, with a total of three books read, but that was my TBR, so it's fine. <laughs> In case you all don't know, the Reading Rush is a large reading challenge that takes place on booktube, bookstagram, just the bookish side of the internet once a year, right in the middle of Camp NaNoWriMo. <laughs> Timing. And there was seven challenges this time. You can pick whatever books you want to fill as many of the challenges as you want. So I managed to get three books to fit all seven challenges because I am queen at procrastinating and also at being lazy. Okay. The first book I read is The Lost Letter by Mimi Matthews. I used this book to fulfill like four of the seven categories. So I definitely had to read this book. The Lost Letter is a Victorian romance. It is the first true romance book I've ever really read. I'm reading it as part of like a romance reading vlog, so I'm not going to talk about it in too much depth and detail because that will be for the romance vlog. In hindsight, maybe including this in the Reading Rush uh, TBR was not my smartest move, but I have no regrets because it was so good. It was a little bit cliche, a little bit predictable, and absolutely everything I wanted it to be. The Lost Letter, as I mentioned, is a Victorian romance. It is about a young woman named Sylvia. She used to be in love with this soldier. He went away to war. She wrote to him, but he never wrote back to her. And she thought that he didn't love her anymore and he just forgot about her. And years later, he is back from the war and his sister comes to Sylvia and says, Look, he got really scarred up in the battle, and he's went through a lot of trauma, and he's doing really badly. Will you come to his mansion and try to make him feel better? Just try to cheer him up, because he was in love with you in the past. And she doesn't really want to, but the sister convinces her to, and she comes, and the shenanigans ensue, and it was just so sweet. It was so sweet. It was just, yeah. As you may have gathered by the title being The Lost Letter, there's obviously a big portion of conflict centered around the fact that she sent him letters and he didn't respond. And so there was some of the obvious, these people just need to communicate thing going on. But I came into this book knowing there was going to be that just by reading the description and the title itself. So I expected it and it didn't bother me and it was exactly like something I might want to write in the future. Like I said, I don't want to talk about it too much. I've got my my reading journal here. That's what I'm staring at and pointing at. I don't want to talk about it too much because I have a romance vlog for why I'm reading this, but it's so cute. Go read it. It's so cute. It's so sweet. It's just fluff. The second book in my TBR was Saga Volume 1 by Brian Vaughn. Hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Saga is a very popular graphic novel series that is a space opera about this couple and their baby. The whole world's trying to kill them because they were sort of deserters from their two opposing planets that were battling each other and they fell in love and they had a kid and this is where they just had the baby and they're trying to escape the hostile planet that they're on. I have a couple things to say about this. First of all, that <laughs> I should have probably done my due diligence in looking up this book before I just plowed headfirst into it because going on Goodreads after I'd read it, I was like, yeah, that, there's some stuff about this I probably would have liked to know. I enjoyed the book. I'm giving it 4 out of 5 stars. It was very well written and well illustrated. I was very invested in the main characters and their baby. I want them to succeed, but I don't know, I don't think I will be continuing on with the series because this is a very adult graphic novel. <laughs> It puts the graphic in graphic novel. It's very explicit. There's a lot of sex scenes drawn out in the type of detail that I'm personally not comfortable with. And probably should have seen that coming. I probably should have looked it up and seen if that was the case first because it is an 
adult graphic novel. It's not for kids. Because of my own personal taste, I will probably not be continuing on with the series because that type of explicit content is really not my thing and it's not something I'm comfortable with. But it was a very good story and anyone who is comfortable with that, I would highly recommend it. So, 4 out of 5 stars for the great story, 10 out of 10 on the uncomfortable scale for me personally. <laughs> The third and final book I read for The Reading Rush is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I was introduced to this book as a movie when I was a kid. I didn't even know it was a book for the longest time. And when I found out it was by Neil Gaiman, I went, wow, does he write everything? <laughs> In case uh, you are living under a rock and have not read the book or seen the movie or know what it's about, Stardust is about a young man named Tristan who goes across this wall that borders uh, fairyland with his little town in, I think it's England. He goes across the wall in order to retrieve a fallen star so he can win the heart of this girl named Victoria in his little country town. The fallen star is not a lump of rock, the fallen star is an injured woman. And the rest of the world is after her as well, so many shenanigans ensue and adventures and awesome stuff and this book was not what I expected it to be. The movie is a very children's book type of movie and there's a lot more adventure in the movie than there actually is in the book. A lot of the scenes that were in the book or things that were just mentioned in passing in the book were turned into this really dramatic thing in the movie and the entire like climax and ending of the movie wasn't even in the book at all and I kind of appreciate them as their own separate thing now because they're not very much alike. The very first note I have on my little bullet journal here is absolutely magical. This book, it is so good. I know Neil Gaiman is a great writer, but for some reason I don't just devour all of his books. I really should because I have never picked one up and been disappointed. He has an amazing, magical, lyrical, sort of old-fashioned style, especially going on in this book. It is the perfect definition of an extended fairy tale. Something I was thinking about as I was reading this is, if you've been watching my Camp NaNoWriMo vlogs, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, link up in the cards. If you've been watching those vlogs, you know I am writing a fairy tale type of epic fantasy book with literal fairies in it right now, and I've been sort of struggling on where to go with the ending of the book and Stardust sort of helped me in a weird way because it managed to be this epic story but didn't have to have the whole dramatic blow up and climax at the end that was over the top and movie like. It was just sort of this subtle quiet ending and I went that's exactly what I'm trying to accomplish in this book and it's hard to accomplish something when you don't see it written very often and this was perfect timing perfect timing. It helps me a lot. His books are inspiring. What can I say? I gave that book five out of five stars as well. I am on a good reading streak here. Did I mention I gave The Lost Letter five out of five stars too? I did. So I got five out of five stars, four out of five stars, and five out of five stars. The only reason I gave Saga four is because some of it just made me way too uncomfortable. <laughs> so what a successful reading rush that was. It even helped me with Camp Nano. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to subscribe and ding that little notification bell. It really helps out my channel. My short story collection, All the Woods She Watches Over, is available for pre-order right now. If you pre-order, don't forget to enter the giveaway where you can win a signed hardback, some stickers, and some other cool goodies. I post videos on Mondays or Fridays, sometimes both days, and I will see y'all next time. Bye!